Hi, I'm Felicity Rican, and today we're at AB Kuma School in Soweto. Today's episode is about how we can teach maths effectively in a multilingual maths classroom. Let's go see the maths teacher, Mrs. Wane, who's kindly invited us to sit in on today's lesson for this episode. Mrs. Wane, what is the official language of learning and teaching for the school? Our official language is English. I speak Zulu. Most of my learners speak Zulu, although when they go home, they have to speak Sutu or Kosa to their parents. So you speak Zulu, some of your learners speak Zulu, and others speak Sutu or Kosa, while you have to teach in English. Yes. Learning is integrally related to language. It's an important tool. We use language to think, to understand others, and to speak. While the teacher introduces the lesson, notice how the teacher and the learners use language. Today's lesson, it's about addition. You remember addition, ne? Yes. We are going to do addition, but today I want us to do different kinds of addition. In mathematics, we don't only use one method to add and to, get, to come to the sum. We can use different methods to add and also come to the same answer. Do you understand? Yes. So before we start, what I want us to do, I want us to do a little warm up. Firstly, we'll count in ones, then we'll move into tens, then we'll count into hundreds. Just to remind ourselves how to count, ne? because that will help us when we come to our practice today we do, when we do addition. So let's count in ones. Starting from 28, not passing 56. So did you get the instruction clearly? Yes. Okay, fine, let's start. 28, What did you notice about the way language was used here? Broadly speaking, we can say that language in the maths classroom is used in two ways, for thinking and for communicating. When Mrs. Wani introduced today's lesson, she used language to communicate. And again, when she was telling the learners how to do the warm-up activity, she was communicating her instructions. Okay, now we're going to do the last one. We are going to count in hundreds. Lalela Gashi says one. Count in hundreds. Sikala Gupi, 850. Asiluli Gupi, 1,100. Says one. Okay, let's go. 950, when the learners counted up in tens and hundreds, they used language to them. They had to work out what number came next and then say it in words, rather than write it in number symbols. While listening to the questions, they had to think in order to understand the question. Then they had to think how to work out their answer. They also used language for communication when telling the teacher what they thought the answer to a question was. As you can see, the teacher and the learners in a maths classroom are using language all the time. How the teacher uses language and how she requires the language to be used by her learners will greatly affect their success in mathematics. Let's look at some of the issues involved here. In the context of the new curriculum, if children learn uh, mathematics in a language that they are not fluent in, they are hugely disadvantaged. With the, with the new curriculum, children are also expected to participate, to, to become fluent, to be able to communicate mathematically, um, explain their own solutions, give justifications for their answers, make mathematical arguments, engage in mathematical conversations. So which means it's not just solving equations and stopping there, but it's also, it, it involves much more than that. So if you're learning math in a language that, that you don't understand, how do you, how do you then engage in those kinds of mathematical practices that require fluency in a language, not just mathematics? So now we've done our warm-up exercises. We are able to count. Now I'm going to give you the problem of the day that I want you to solve. Says one, listen, we are taking a journey or a trip. We are going to visit your grandmother, Ukoko, Anit, Makaya. And Ukoko stays. I always speak Zulu when I explain the sums or when I explain the mathematical terms so that they understand clearly when I give the instructions. 
you want to go when they don't have it because you go to select day. Set day ni la mau kaba ngit. Prepare ilum pago wako. Then now you go on your journey. Mau su sentele ni on your way to Ukoko. After we have traveled eight hundred and seventy-seven kilometers, so lambi. We are now hungry. Pelu peti nompa gu peti tombo lo peti nkuku anit so funugu usa. Mofiga la enteleni we are paga so lambil. You want to eat. Now what I want you to tell me, how many kilometers are left? Ugu tu figure la guko. Now from Lausuga corner we have already travelled 877 kilometers anit. But still, you still have a distance that you have to cover. So as to cover this distance, 1,655 kilometers. Now, I want you to work in pairs first. Use any method to tell me how many kilometers are left. Any method, first work with your pair. You discuss, you can discuss as a group, as a pair, before writing down, brainstorm. Says one. Well, in a moment, we'll look more closely at learners engaging in group work, and we'll see how dependent learners are on language to demonstrate their understanding and to communicate with each other. Any method that you feel comfortable with? When your learners work in groups, do you allow them to choose which language they use? Yes, I do. It builds their self-confidence. It encourages teamwork. They're able to communicate. It's easy when they, the peers explain to each other. If the others did not understand the instruction, then they explain to each other. It also helps the learners who are always quiet to participate in the group. When they work in groups, that's where they have to communicate. Then they explain to each other if they did not get the, the other members of the group did not get the instructions clear. Speaking Zulu at school because I can pronounce words in Zulu better than English. I like speaking Zulu in my math class because I understand the sounds better. People's thinking is often developed and shaped by others. In other words, using communication also develops your thinking skills. Therefore, group discussions are a valuable tool in the classroom. However, when learners struggle to make themselves understood in group discussions, because they're struggling with the language, it undermines the mathematical learning process. In fact, many of them just won't speak up, so you won't know what they're thinking or if they need help, and they won't be able to give their valuable ideas to the group discussion. Okay. So, Lanan, Lanan, Tin, Lanan, Cousin, Tin, where do you go to now? To a thousand. To a thousand. Seven. Eight hundred and ninety nine eight. What do you do when they're struggling to explain themselves in English? I allow them to speak in Zulu. Then, at the end of, where, after they've explained everything, then I interpret that into English. Teachers need to be comfortable with using the, the language of the learners, the language that learners understand better. Okay, and being comfortable with that means they can give explanations if they are, they are dealing with, let's say for example, the difference between line symmetry and rotational symmetry. They can give the, that explanation in the language that learners understand. And also allow children to, to give their explanations, justifications for their answers and so on, in the language that they feel comfortable in. Okay, I've been moving around and I've seen that you have been using different types of method to come to the answer. So we'll get three groups 
to come and do their method on the board and show us how they came about to the answer. Fine. So tell a crook gift. What was a pambil? Uzula gift to think ten. You explain Ustella Gas, a woody, Ufigeranja, Nigui Anzayako. Here, Mrs. Wane is using both English and Zulu to communicate the instructions for the activity. She wants to make sure that all the learners understand what they must do. Okay, now we've seen the method gift and scissor used. Do you agree with this method? Yes. When learners share their different methods, they enrich their own ideas about different ways to solve the same problem. Okay, now the first group used this method. The second group used the second method, but they used the arrows to add so that it became easier for them to add. Well, now I'm going to call my group three. I've seen they've used a totally different method. Cool. I hope someone gets understanding. Then, Uguti Benzeranja Nilan. Se abo Uguti ba 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 eteranja na yeti. No ma kono ongazwang. Kita mi bangas tayo Uguti u six hundred dilo. O o o o bangas tayo Uguti u hundred dilo. Bam chole gupi because agay kola u hundred na yeti. A bangas tayo Uguti u hundred dilo. Bam chole gupi. Okay, that's cool. Here, Mrs. Wane is repeating the learners' ideas in Isi Zulu to enhance the learners' mathematical thinking. Okay, so si abona swanki method tawai seven zisi langit. Now it shows us that we met. We don't use one method, but we use different method, and we all come up to the. Same answer. Do you understand? Yes. Many people believe that math should be taught in English from a young age to improve their chances of getting jobs, of tertiary education, and possibly in high school. Others believe that the concepts of maths should be taught to you in your mother tongue from a young age, and then that should be changed later on. What is your stand on this? If they don't understand the language, how do they then begin to understand new concepts being taught in a language that they don't understand. So educationally, it makes sense to, to teach them in their own language. That, of course, doesn't mean you can't, they do, should not be learning English. They should be learning English, but the mathematics class is not necessarily the class where the, in the foreground or what is important is to teach English. In the maths class, the purpose is to teach maths. And so because the goal is to teach maths, you use the language that, that, that the learners understand better. As a teacher, it is very important for you to be aware of the different types of language discourses which learners are negotiating. Firstly, they are moving between their home language and the language of learning and teaching. Secondly, they are moving between informal ways of speaking and the formal mathematical discourse. Thirdly, they have to negotiate the movement between spoken language and written language. This is complicated by the fact that maths has its own form of written expression. Our role as teachers is to mediate the movement between the informal spoken language in the mother tongue to formal mathematical expression using the school's chosen language of teaching and learning. It's not always easy, but it's critical to carry on trying out and thinking about new ways to improve the learner's communication and mathematical language. <laughs> Goodbye. That's it. So my young hand.